Uh, okay, so let me start by welcoming uh, you all, and in particular our guest speaker today, Lisa Wilson, who's one of our newest members to the networking hub. Um, Lisa uh, is going to chat with us today about moving from being that solopreneur, working for herself, into the phase of becoming a true CEO, becoming an employer, or certainly engaging with contractors. Um, I think if if there's um, if there are differences here, I would say a lot of us have the experience of working for other companies where we've had access to IT departments, where we've had access to marketing departments, HR, and such. So we have that kind of touch point, IT being another one. When we're on our own, we don't have access to, a, to that. We are that person. We are all of that person and um, those individuals. So what happens when we want to um, step into the uh, place where we're engaging with um, employees and how to best set that model up for our business. Well, Lisa ha has taken her success as working within the HR field as a leader for large organizations and brought the opportunity to us, the SMEs and the solopreneurs. She offers training and coaching and um, helps those um, get out of those tricky situations that they may mm -hmm. find themselves in. She is, um, through training and education, a leadership and corporate coach. She is certifi a certified um, human resource leader and a trained mediator. She has had a career of 15 years within the HR um, realm and her drive, um, her drive had her in a manager's role for five years into her career that is 28 years old, Lisa. I don't know how you can claim 28 years. You're far too young for that. Um, so we're going to learn some tips and tools and processes on how we can move from overwhelm, uh, being an overwhelmed entrepreneur to taking a team on or onboarding our first um, employee. So without further ado, I will stop sharing my screen and open it up for Lisa. Lisa, take the floor. All right, let me get that screen opened up properly. There we go. Thanks so much, Siobhan. So I'm just going to clarify that I was in the manager's role at 28, <laughs> not for 28 years. <laughs> Close, but yeah, not quite. <laughs> uh, detail, all in the detail. <laughs> yeah. All in the detail. <laughs> so close. It felt but. like 28 years. It sure did. <laughs> yes. So we all start our business. We're all really excited. We learn all the things, right? whatever our area of expertise is, but then we have to learn the marketing if that's not our area of expertise. I know a few of you are the experts in that here. Social media, maybe sales funnels, production, what that looks like for each company is different. I think a lot of us here are more about services. So our production is really the service that we're giving. And we start to build, you know, you get those sales funnels start to work and the, the networking starts to work and we start to build. And then what happens is, we get really busy. Woohoo! So our business is now up here. We're really busy. We no longer have time to do the social media and the marketing and all of those things. And whoop, now we're back down. Ugh, I had this really good wave. And we start to ride that wave. Really busy, not busy. Really busy, not busy. The other possibility of what happens is that we just get so overwhelmed because our sales funnel is so awesome. The business does not stop coming in. Now we all of a sudden feel so overwhelmed and don't feel like we're doing the quality work that we used to do because we're in a state of just constantly running and moving to the next. And so that really is the point we need to hire someone. We need to bring in some help. And I'm gonna share with you today some tips on that, but this really is about bringing on not necessarily your first staff member, but maybe it's a consultant or someone that can come in and do the things that aren't really your, what we'll call zone of genius. Where this came from is I coming to networking events like this and I would show up and I would see all these entrepreneurs who were either starting to feel that wave or they were getting into that complete overwhelm. And I thought they really need help. And I would say that to them in the meetings, you know what, you need to hire some help. And they were just so uncomfortable with it. And I thought, you know what, this is something that's somewhat easy for me. I need to do this. I need to create this course. And in one of my networking groups, there was a woman who runs a business of VAs. I think she's up to 75 VAs and bookkeepers right now. 
So this is what she does. And so she and I worked together. It actually ended up working out for her as well. She sent me a bunch of her clients and some clients who'd kept their VAs and some clients who sent them away, like just couldn't handle having someone helping them. So I got the feedback and I'm going to share some of that with you today. I have had this course prepared for about four years. I knew everything that was going to go into the course, but I hadn't brought on my first VA yet. So I couldn't bring myself to share the course until I'd done it myself so that I put those pieces in that, that those things that you might run into. So it's been on, on there for a while, but this is, uh, and so I'll be going through all of these things today, but that's the history of where this came from, why I created this course, because it's not generally who I market to. I normally market to businesses that already have um, leaders and they're already in that space. So Siobhan already shared this, but I was in, uh, I've been coaching for about 15 years. I was pretty close to 20 years in HR because I stayed in it partially after I left full-time. Uh, mostly I do the coaching now. I've been leading in a lot of different organizations. So I've led in companies where I'm, where people actually report to you and they, they, they depend on their salary from you. But I've also led at places like Toastmasters, the Human Resources Professionals Association and Rotary, which are very different when they're not getting paid. <laughs> so I've been there. Um, and that's, that's my background. I'd just like to share that so you know I've done this. So the first question I'm just going to ask you is, what is it that you want? Do you want to keep the business small and just keep doing everything yourself? That is totally okay. I do know people who that's what they want, and that's fully reasonable. Just know that you're only going to grow to a certain size and be careful about how much business you take on so that you're not overwhelming yourself. Fully okay. Probably the rest of this isn't going to help you a lot. But <laughs> if you want to grow the business and spend more time in working in what I call your zone of genius, then, then this is what we're going to go through today. So I'm going to take you through the reality that if you want to grow your business, you're going to have to add more people. We can do all the things we can for time saving. So I now have Calendly. So when someone wants to set up an appointment with me, I don't even talk to them. We don't do that back and forth email. I have all these different things for signing contracts. And I did all of that technology stuff that I can to really speed up my processes. But the reality is now I need some help. And a lot of us get to that point. This is, I will go through this very quickly, but it's generally the, what I call my foundation of leadership. I'm writing a book right now, so I'm actually gonna change this to the roots of leadership because leaders need to be bendy, not solid. <laughs> so you need to be clear on what you're doing and these are gonna be important through this. You'll hear me say it through it. Vision, mission, vision, and values. So why are you here? What's the business for? And what's important to keep us in line? Be really clear on who you are so that when you do bring on a team, you can better understand them. You need to understand what the role of a leader is. This is something Brene Brown shared that when people step into the leadership role, they, they don't know how they provide value to the company anymore. So it's really important to be clear on how you provide value. And the last but not least, you need to have the ability to have a difficult conversation. And my apologies, my phone is of course ringing now. <laughs> so just gonna stop that. So I'm going to go through the roadblocks and then we'll, as we're going through those, I'll discuss quickly the realities of them. And then I'll give you some tips on how to make this pro this whole process less scary. And we'll have, hopefully have some time for questions. So these are the five roadblocks that came up over and over when I did those interviews. So the first one is fear. So these were the three main things that came up under fear. New staff won't speak in my voice. I'll lose control over my business. And if our, if our new business relationship doesn't work out, I can't be mean. Um, you can guess I was speaking to some women in that one. <laughs> so um, the first one, look, there are people out there who are trained to speak in your voice. You probably by now have enough social media and written work that they can go and learn who you are without you having to spend a whole pile of time with them. When I brought in my first VA, she actually went through two years of emails that I had sent out to my email list and she wrote blogs for me from them. So she had no problem speaking in my voice. 
anytime I needed her to post anything, she knew how I would say it, or she had somewhere to go to figure out how I would say it. It is totally possible for them to speak in your voice. And I'm sure that Claudia and, and Jennifer can share that that's what they do. That is totally what they do. Um, and so it is a fully a possibility. You will not lose control of your business. You will actually gain control of your business because now you won't be in the details. Someone else will take care of the details and you can start looking at the bigger picture. So instead of it being you doing your bookkeeping at the end of the month and trying to figure it all out and then having zero time to go, wait, is this money I'm spending on maybe a marketing piece? Is this actually bringing back what it needs to? Now you can make those decisions instead of spending your time doing the detailed work. So you actually gain control. Um, and then the last piece, if our new business relationship doesn't work out, I can't be mean. Look, it's not mean. If it's not working out, it's not working out. And that's okay. Especially if it's a contractor, they already have their own business. They likely have other clients. They'll move on to someplace that works better. If it's a staff member, same thing. They need to be somewhere that's going to support them. I've had experience working for companies that I didn't fit. It really isn't a good thing. Second one is habit. I'm just used to doing everything myself. This one, I'll just say quickly, we all know that if we want to grow, we have to change our habits. It's just the reality of life. I'll use the cliche one. If we want to lose weight, we need to change our habits. We need to work out more, change our food. Same thing for the business. You've got a habit that's not getting you where you want to be. You have to change that habit. Time. <laughs> this one was mine, actually. I'm not organized to begin with. How, how, how can I pass things off to someone? And the reality is, they're good at that. They will come in and organize you. And that is exactly what happened for me. My VA came in, she had two projects. So that one where she wrote a bunch of blogs for me for my emails. And the second one was, I moved all of my files onto a OneDrive and she cleaned them up. I can now find everything like that. It's so easy. And then I just follow what she did. I just make sure when I save things, it follows her system. I never would have created as good of a system. That's just the reality. And the second one is true. I'm not going to lie. It is true. It will take us more time on the front end to train someone and get them on the same page. That is definitely true. But here's the reality of being in a leadership position. When you are in a leadership position, you're not looking at today. You are looking at one to five years. Where do you want to go and where do you want to be? And so taking the time in the short term is going to help you in the long run, which is our goal, right? Um, this one comes up often. I don't know where to start. And I'll give you some tips on this one at the end. Um, it often comes there, but just quickly, you look at what's taking up your time and what really you really don't enjoy doing the most. And there is someone that can do it better than you, I promise. So look at those things in your business that are taking you out of your zone of genius and start with the one that just is really the most frustrating to you. And how does this even make me money? <laughs> so uh, I'm sure there's someone that can describe this one better than I can. But basically, it's this. We're only making money when we're client facing, right? At the end of the day, if you're not in front of your client, uh, that's for the service or you're making more product, if that's if you're more of a product base. So all the time you're spending doing those back end of the business stuff, you're not client facing. And so that's how it makes you money. If they take that work off your plate, you have more times to be client facing. And that's the quick, simple answer to that. So I'll pause here if there's any questions. Do we have any questions? I'm going to put this. Yeah, if you'd like to raise your hand or, or put a yes, <clears throat> Claudia. I think that um, besides the need or realizing that you need somebody, you really need to have a plan for when you have that somebody. Yeah. Precisely for the last thing you're saying, right? Yeah. Uh, making money, because then yeah. all of a sudden you find yourself with that extra time. Yeah. If you don't have a plan, how to use that extra time, it can really backfire. Yeah. 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 And it, it's one of, it's really difficult. The biggest thing that comes up, and I won't go into too much of it today, is when the when to bring someone in because you need to bring them in before you're overwhelmed, but it's hard to know when you're going to be. Mm -hmm. So, so I, like there's VAs out there that'll work five hours a week and then you have a relationship with them and they can move up to 10, 15, 20 hours a week as you need to. Those, that's one of my, one of my suggestions. Rinsk. Brilliant. 
Renska. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm on the receiving end, or I used to be on the receiving end as a VA and, and now more as a virtual business manager. So I, I try to bridge the gap between the person who actually needs assistance and, and the assistant, whether that is a VA or uh, someone else. But what I find is that um, just because you're an entrepreneur or a solopreneur or whatever you want to call it, it that doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to outsource. And that is yes. some people expect that if you own your own business, that you know everything. And that is yes. just not true. It's, it's a learning process. And yeah. um, a, a VA or a social media person or whatever they do for you, they cannot read your mind. So you have to they, yes. you have to learn how to outsource to, to, to someone to make it effective. And that just takes time. You cannot expect someone to know you and your business within a week or two. That just doesn't happen. No, no it's going to take some time. And that's why I say that it, that one is true where it's going to take too much time. Yes, it will take time in the short term, but that's not why we're here. We're here to keep this business running for a long term. Right. Yep. So, so and and I touched really quickly at the beginning on when I talked about my pillars is mission, vision, and values. Why are you here? Why are you doing this? You have to get really clear on that. Most of us are. Um, strangely, I give a lot of the same messages that marketing does. Most of us are clear on that. Those stay the same when you hire someone. You're going to treat them based on that vision, mission, and values. And that has to remain. But that's a whole different presentation. <laughs> so I'm going to go on just so we get you to the tips. But before you hire, I want you to get clear on, on a few things. So there it is, your mission, vision, and values. Why are you here? Why are you doing this? And what are the guideposts? So values are really our guideposts. I like to picture it like this. It's our mission, our vision is a picture at the end of a road. The, the mission is the road we're traveling on and how we're choosing to travel it right now. And the values are the, are the barriers. So think about a road that has like a steep fall after we always put up guideposts, right? Like there's always those posts with nice, I don't know what it looks like there, but it's usually a steel thing to buffer you so your car doesn't go down the hill. That's what you're, I prefer them out here so that people have room for creativity, but there's only so much room in the Zoom screen. <laughs> so uh, so again, what tasks are you ta are taking you away from your passions? Which frustrates you the most and and or which take you the most time. So what's taking sucking up your time in the week that someone else could likely do quicker. When I get a bookkeeper, she does what I do in an hour and 10 minutes. So really makes, makes a big difference. And the last one is what you can afford. So think about what you're ready to pay every month. So some other tips, do an interview. Look, I have a VA, she's awesome for me. This does not mean she will be awesome for you. It's just the reality. Partially, we need different things. Partially, we have different personalities. There's lots of different reasons. So that goes with the get a reference. So if you do, if you do a like posting, hey, I need a VA, and you get a bunch of people apply, get the references. Please talk to other people. Um, regardless, a lot of entrepreneurs though, what we do is we get the references first. That's fine too. Get the references, but then do an interview because you need to be clear that they can speak in your language, that they have their values are close to yours, that they'll understand you. So you need to do both and I don't care which order. You can either get the references and then do an interview or you can do an interview but, and get references, but you need to do both. It's really important. Um, once they're on, communicate your vision, mission and values as well as your goals for yourself and for them. So you need, you need all of that. And then I have to say this one, I just wanna reiterate this one a lot. Listen to them. They know their area of expertise better than you do. So listen to them. Once they come on, let them do their thing. Doesn't mean that they can speak off of your voice or do something that goes outside of your values, but like, I'll, I'll just use a bookkeeper. I don't, know if, I don't know everyone in the room, but I don't think we have one in the room, but it's one of those things that we all just try to, to do and we do our best. But they're going to come in and say, You're, that's not the way you do that. Listen to them. Really figure that out. Um, let, them, let them explain to you the, the faster way or the better way, because they do know. So any questions on any of that? I have a couple of things at the end that I'll share with you. But Paula? Um, thanks, Lisa. That was absolutely 
Brilliant. I'm on here. Um, and, um, you know, all the things you've said, I could, they apply to me, you know, about no time, disorganised, all the rest of it. Um, I, just one thing I would say, yes, do listen to them. They're, they're experts in their own area. However, I did um, interview one bookkeeper and she started and she was expert at what she did, but then she started telling me how I should do what I do and oh. gave, me, gave me books to read. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> so, so I thanked her for her insights, but politely told her to basically bugger off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, listen to them in their area of expertise, not necessarily yours. <laughs> I just That's just awesome. wanted to clarify that. <laughs> yes, thank you for that, Paula. That I've never heard that before, so yeah. I'm going to add that in now. <laughs> well, going forward, <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to share a few things in the chat, just how you can get to me. But I'm actually running a course for this. So the the main course is going to run in November. So I do a full course to take you through this. Um, but if you're interested in doing it sooner, I have a few people, I think there's three or four already that want me to run it in September, so I will run it earlier. So just make sure you get in touch with me if you want to, if you're interested in, in joining it and want to do it sooner. Um, I will put all of this in the chat though, so no worries. And anyone here today, um, I normally set up 20 minute calls just to introduce ourselves because for networking. But if you have questions about this or you're really struggling with this right now, set up this call. It's a 45 minute call and I'm happy to answer your questions. I'll put all of, again, I'll put all of this in the chat. This is all, how do you find me? And just wanna leave you with one last thing. Actually two last things. Um, I have, I also have a book. Um, I've just written a how to hire your, how to hire a VA. It's an ebook. I just had someone put it up on my website. She got them up yesterday, yay. So, <laughs> so I will put a link to that as well, um, just so that you don't have to frantically take notes here. But, um, but here's the thought I wanna leave you with. If you've been called to help in some way, so most of us, we get into this business because we have a passion for it. There was something that called us to do this. If that's the case, then shouldn't you maximize the amount of people you're helping? And if that's the case, you need to bring somebody on to help you. Well done. What a great way to end that. Thank you so much, <laughs> Lisa. Um, as I open it out for further questions, one thing I'd like to add myself, a lesson I'd learned when I was in the corporate, well, in an agency, um, and I was under severe pressure and I had so much to do and I had little time to do. We're coming up to a massive big air show we were delivering. And my boss had said just write down everything you need to do and I said I haven't got time I have no time I've, I've less time to do what I need to do and now you want me to do a list but I have to say in his irritating way he got me to do the right thing and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and it was a hell of a lot to do and then he said to me prioritize it and I prioritized it and then he said now tell me what you have to do there's nobody else here in this business can do what you do and I end up with about three things and the rest I could delegate and I think this rule applies when looking for your you know your your contractor or your employee whoever you want to come in and the other thing is pricing it so putting down against those tasks if it's a ten dollar twenty dollar um, hourly fee that this job is going to cost you and you charge out 50 to 400 whatever it is surely it pays for itself and as Lisa rightly said this frees you up to maximize the time that you are there to do your to do the work for others that um, depends on your skill sets rather than the skill sets that are more menial to getting your job done so Lisa thank you for sharing all of those tips and like I said for our members that this I know I'll be re-listening to it and um, will be available on our YouTube channel and I'll share that link in the members forum. Anybody else have some questions for Lisa as um, as we wrap this up or experience that you'd like to share? Thanks Lisa for your contact details. Well just just to that point like I, I've been there like I totally resonated with what you were saying, Lise, thanks very much for that. But I ended up getting um, a team in Sri Lanka, like like that, a, a VA service to do 
everything to do with my website to like review. I used to have a list because, and then I stopped feeding my list with content because I had no time. And they do all my video editing, they do all my graphics, they do all my banners, they do all my website stuff. So that's stuff I used to do myself. And the amount of time alone that that has saved me to actually, outside of delivering work with clients to actually think about my business, which I, I didn't get to do for at least two years. So it, it actually is amazing. And now I'm in that transition. What do I want to do next? Do I create another me? I need to think about that. So that's my next step. Wow. That's Love a, it. that's a whole other presentation we have. To yeah. yeah. Creating another me. How do I, what was that? What was the shape? <laughs> Dolly. Creating another Dolly. Another me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Shay. Well, if you think about it, it, it's if any big business, you don't see, well, Steve Jobs isn't here anymore, but you don't see him making iPhones uh, in a factory somewhere. So if you want to grow as your business, you have to hire and, and, and you can be good at everything. So I think that is also the, the key takeaway. And, then, and him is a good example because he also never did it. Yeah never did it. He always had partners. He was the visionary and he yeah. had partners who created it for him. I started reading the book about him. He never actually did any yeah. of the coding or he might've done very small amounts at the beginning, but it wasn't, it's, um, I won't be able to think of his name. I can picture him because he was on the big bang theory, but, um, yeah, there was another gentleman with him that did, that did all of the, like the, the work. Steve was out yeah. here or something. What, what's his name? Yes. Yeah. 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 There it is. Thank you. I have to share this out. No, Jen, actually, can you please share out? Because I know you share gems in the chat room, but I want to hear your voice. Bring it out, please. Sure. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, like I said, was in the chat. You know, the reason that you do, I remember one Sunday morning at the beginning of my business, like scheduling the email that I had spent so much time writing and I was in the back end of my website and doing all that. I mean, that is just, not, it takes me so much longer. And so, if you remember that you got into your business to have freedom, what are there, what are the things in your business that are not f f feel do not feel like freedom? Um, I just want to really encourage you that if you have not figured this out yet, it is a huge amount of time on the front end. But working with somebody to move you through it, I mean, it's total. It's I would never be anywhere close to where I am in my business if I had not done this yeah. front loading, like Lisa said. It's it's so worthwhile. Yeah. It's and a pain I, in the ass. Like it's a pain in the ass. I'm not gonna like lie about that, but it, it's been life changing. But it, it, the pain in the ass is at the beginning. So it yeah. is. And um, going back to your pointies about, uh, or you know, speaking in your voice or being able to do it the way you do it. I mean, I I was. I have to say, I'm a recovering perfectionist. Um, and my thing was nobody can do it like I do it. And again, another lesson is, is it really important that they take the same journey from A to D? Or is it okay that they go A, X, Y to D? But once they get there at the end and deliver you what you've asked for, I think is the most important. It doesn't matter what they do. Interestingly, uh, I have, um, so the theme for August is upskilling and um, developing new skills. And I was going to do something on it myself. And I've actually... Uh, I'm very excited because we will be, I will be bringing to you an interesting company that's just um, uh, just come into the fore for us. Uh, I won't tell you much now, but he is very much on the same vein as we're talking now. He is, he has created a new business that he knows nothing about how to develop, but he knows how to bring it to market and he knows how to wow. deliver to his clients. And he curses himself sometimes saying, I just can't code. I'm in my head, I'm going, aren't you lucky? Because you would spend your time coding and miss being the creative genius that you were when you started this business. So I think there's a lot to take away from while we know how to do the menial and let's face it, they're menial tasks to get us to bring our genius to market. And if we can get somebody else to help us do that, then we're, we're going to be in a better shape. Lisa, thank you. Oh, Paula, if you want to. Um... I, I just wanted to add one thing and Probably I'm, I should keep quiet, but one of the things that always amazes me is how people um, very often can be flat out at work, be overwhelmed, but never think twice about getting someone to help with the dreary work at home, the housework. 
you know, to free up that worry, that responsibility, yep. getting stuff out of the freezer, doing the shopping, all that stuff, which actually, for many of us, we have to do these two jobs. And, and that is the easiest thing to fill, in a way. And yep. that, that, to me, is always the biggest freedom of all, not having to do anything like that. Yeah, I'm still looking yeah. like Guy Friday. Who's, who's it that said, uh, always, always employ smarter people than yourself? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. well, you, you, can, you bring your you bring oh. your expertise, but whoever's doing the bookkeeping or whatever, you always employ somebody who's smarter than you. They're smarter in their field. I think who Paul employed yeah. was uh, somebody who yeah. thought you were smarter at everything. I will finish it there. <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much for your intellect and for bringing this to our attention. I 